You are the drizzle meister. I am such a drizzle meister. I, I drizzled right away. I'm drizzling right now. What the f are we doing? And welcome back to another Linux Emcast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin. That is the Jordan. And there, there, half man, half roller gator, is one Pedro, Mateus. That was a thing, yeah. It was, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, we we, we were talking about that last week. <laughs> we went deep it's, it's, in it's Roller Gator. It's a little hazy near the end, yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I vaguely remember Roller Gator. Yes. What's going on? What's new? we got a big show for you this afternoon, this evening, wherever you may be. But we also got to say hi to Shat Realm Dynamic watching us live on Twitch because they're helping us form Cocaine Voltron. And that's right. An important part of the equation. Now, how much would you pay? So let's think about this. Uh, what have you been up to, man? Uh, in the pre pre super shows and during, well, I should say in the uh, pre shows, and Pedro showing off his laptops because he's got them right there. That's why he keeps them there. And it's like, hey, laptop. Pedro, got it. Done. Smaller laptop. <laughs> Done. Like red <laughs> laptop. <laughs> okay. He's like a cuttlefish made out of laptops. It is a bit terrifying. I am testing a uh, audio interface right now that showed up. If you're in Discord, it's super secret. You can't tell everybody, but I posted a picture of it. And I want to see if it's going to explode. But while doing this, I decided, you know what? It's a new year. It's 2022 in the year of his noodly appendage. So I'm going to upgrade the kernel on Jackbox. So I went from 510 to 515. You know, it's got the new audio stuff in it and lower latency for USB. Oh boy. If you got an audio interface, uh, go ahead and um, pop in old kernel 515. That, that's a night and day difference, allegedly. I mean, it is. We're talking like three to five milliseconds, just, just shaved off the top to the part. I thought my measurements were wrong. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, boy. So I'm going to have to go back and retest a lot of stuff. And uh, congratulations to the first winners of Trackmania Get Good Grandpa series that took place last night on Twitch. Everyone who showed up and joined, Alan, Strider, Foxy, K.R. Ducky, uh, Barbara, Bunch of other people. I'm just get the winners right here because I did Pedro's method of keeping score. But Alan, paper. Foxy, and Strider <laughs> are each going to get a free game of RN Jesus, and I'm going to be sending that out. That's kind of fun. We we invite everybody to come hang out. We got our own Trackmania server as people were <laughs> showing up last night. And like, hey, how do I get in? How do you get in? Sub to us on Twitch or uh, become a patron. Then you can come play with us and practice. New tracks will yes. be loaded. Tuesday. Jordan, tell me, did, did you like the taste of that? <laughs> did I like the taste of the Nintendo Switch cart I put in my mouth that? during the pre pre Super Chosen, which you should also become a Patreon so you can listen, go listen to that? No, I did not. It tastes bad. Uh -huh. It leaves the it leaves the taste in your mouth. It's pretty fucking awful. I you know what? Good on you, Nintendo. You know how to make a bad tasting video game. Congrats. <laughs> I should have said aftertaste in your mouth. Go back and uh, give give that yeah. a listen. Give that a watch. Uh, that, that was kind of the entertaining part. Um, blindly throwing to Pedro now. Yes. No, it is very much the, uh, the laptop situation. The 701 that I brought up last week. I now have a proper uh, SD card in it. It ha It's a, one of the How's video the class... It's surprisingly like nothing, like nothing at all. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, uh, the, it has a V30, um, SD card, SD XC. And, uh, yeah, it is significantly faster now. Uh, minimum guaranteed speed during, uh, like big file transfers is 30 megabytes per second. So that, it, it it makes a significant difference, especially when the previous one was a class four card. So yes, man. So you can Debian sit back 11. and you can sit back and watch it go slow faster. <laughs> yes, but it's actually surprisingly like it tricks you because uh, if you're just you. using, uh, okay, here's your challenge. <laughs> Integrate the word snappy into your next sentence. No, <laughs> if you're just doing like desktop stuff, it is surprisingly functional. It is, um, you click on things and you see the cursor change to the little uh, wheel 
spinning around. It's like, okay, we'll wait a second. And it loads. Uh, it takes less than a minute for most everything to show up as a window. So I consider <sighs> that workable. Okay. <laughs> but can it play a YouTube video? No, it doesn't. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. At uh, uh, 240p is okay-ish, but it drops a lot of frames. Uh, 360, forget it. Oh man, 360p, man, that's some fucking advanced technology. That's just I'm, 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 I'm going to need that new Intel GPU in order to push those bits, man. Oh man, it's a good thing the horse is always <laughs> rendered at 144. Yeah, I know. It's very, very shaky. Stay away from it. You might vibrate to its frequency as well. It's the Steam Linux. The day. I forgot to map all those buttons, so I have to do that in post. Pretend we were so we- echoey. Winner, yes, winner, we chicken dinner, echoing. Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yes, the big winners of the Steam Awards have finally uh, been announced. And the one, the one the native Linux winner that I could find was Terraria as hey. the Labor of Love Award for 2021. Oh, after all these years, it. Terraria is still racking up the uh, imaginary prizes. Good job. I can't yeah. say I've ever played it. Yeah, uh, par- apparently other 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 winners you're going to need Proton to play under Linux. Uh, Deathloop yes. as most innovative was a little sus. I think like Loop Hero or what, what was what was the other one? Um, what was the other one? Inscription I think had uh, more interesting game design uh, than Deathloop. But people people really like Steppy Vampire Dommy Mommy. That's mm. the that's the big okay, takeaway yeah, from. Yeah, uh, weren't you a little bit yeah. surprised to see that in there? I was like, oh, the internet forgot about that real quick, didn't it? I mean, from from what I saw, like it looked like a pretty solid game. So on Twitter, it like was it. very popular even after it got released. That yeah, you could see Vampire Mommy a lot. So maybe that's just the people I was following. Mm. Yes, certain certain <laughs> accounts that I follow for research purposes. Gaming research. Now, uh, a couple yes. of things that I saw that's kind of neat, a little bit neat, was um, It Takes Two. That won. It won. Uh, what did it win? Uh, most something. Better with friends. <laughs> Makes sense. I've watched people play it on Twitch and stream a little bit of it. But, you know, you got Jordan and I have a very sorted history with the uh, friend past system. Yeah, the 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 the, the Bethesda net. Yeah, yeah that's uh, so when 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 it when it decides it wants to work, it's fine, but only then. It, it, it's just like having to come up with your own system. Maybe this works better, but between that and EA, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna mess around with it. Uh, Cybertruck was on the list. Cybertruck 2077, and here's something I do want to talk about. I want to get your thoughts on because you know. To me, when I saw that, I'm like, you're just sending the wrong message to game developers and publishers with this award thing for that game, because it's just a big, nice signal. It's like, hey, man, yeah, go ahead and release your unfinished, uh, just rushed buggy mess, and we're A-OK, just fix it later on, maybe an entire year later. And I do mean an entire year later, because I'm not great at math, but <laughs> Cybertruck was released in 2020, and it's 2022. Yeah, it's also uh, the fact that most AAA games recently have come out in that particular state. And the award that it got was Outstanding Story Rich Game, Uh which basically goes for, yeah, it's not very good at literally anything else. The story is good, though. The story is okay. (laughs) (laughs) So being the one person on the stream actively playing Cyberpunk, the story is okay. Um, I started it, but yeah, no, I haven't played much of it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta agree with Ven. It's not, it's not a good sign when you can like still get an award after releasing a rushed buggy mess that you had to have PlayStation invent their own, their new refund policy because you, uh, you made and that just decision for them. Remove apparently. the game from right? sale on PlayStation four. It's like, nope, can't buy the game anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but you, you know, you know what, you know, to, to see your projects, reds credit, not their management, the developers, the actual like people writing code, they have managed to put together like a pretty decent game now a year, a year later. I mean, it's, it's management's fault yes. that it got released in a shitty mess. Cause like developers don't choose the yeah, marketing so. management and whoever they had uh, money dealings with that kind of pushed them to just release it, release it. You know, now. I mean, it's whatever in the change. I mean, game, 
larger game companies as a whole, like they need to take a note from like the movie industry. You want to talk about some people that can do a budget and a timeline and be in and out like within the hour of the minute. And when they say they're going to wrap that company can game dev studio, fucking rough estimate on everything. And it's like, oh, we're going to push <laughs> that back a year. Right. So <laughs> all I want to say is everyone who voted for uh cyber truck is just, just do the internet a favor. I know you're not going to do it, but I want you to try Just make that little effort when Witcher 4000 comes out and it's in similar state, be like, that's okay. I'll just wait a year and maybe it'll be kind of mostly playable with your bugs. <laughs> that's all I want to hear from you. That's it. That's the one good thing about Epic uh, exclusives is they can be a whole year. <laughs> they get to real testing, early access. It yeah. Re- yeah. It releases yeah. on and Steam. It's like, oh, it's already had a whole year of beta access. Plus, so yeah. Cool. Then <laughs> a- after, after, after that, you can get it on free, for, get it for free on the Epic game store. So yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not like the developers <laughs> losing any money on that transaction. Epic is paying for those games. Yeah. So, yep. so do you think, guarantee? do you think, um, <laughs> We'll ever get the Epic Game Store on the Steam Deck? <sighs> maybe, maybe if 2022 lives up to the hype of uh, OS here on this uh, next story. Yeah. Uh, so we our, our first our first PC gamer article of the year. It's the year of the Linux deck stop. Yes. Oh boy, I was I was I was wondering. So uh, this is this is an article from PC Gamer talking about. Oh hey. You know, the Steam Deck is going to be the new hotness. It's having an iPod moment. It didn't invent all the stuff, but it's going to perfect it. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think here, here, here the, the, there was there was one quote here that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Why not go all the way and make the PC a console? It's been tried before, but never by a company with Valve's resources or name recognition. You know, except for that last time that Valve. Yeah, tried except for that. when and Valve tried it. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, but so, so here's the thing. I think ultimately we're all really hopeful that the deck is successful, not just for its own sake, not for Valve's sake, but for the fringe benefits of something remotely resembling first class Linux support in the gaming space. And, you know, as we're speeding closer to that February deadline and, you know, it's, it's a short month at that, uh, no battle supply, no battle plan survives first contact with the enemy. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm expecting either another delay or we're going to get some real rough patches for the first month or so. And, you know, I'm, I'm Prove me wrong, Valve. I really hope you do. But, uh, it's yeah. going to be interesting to see what they come up with. I mean, when they say iPod moment, <laughs> I cringe a little bit because like, if you are of a certain age, you remember the initial iPod moment. We had Diamond Rio, so all the other MP3 players we had out, and the tech industry thought the iPod was going to fail very hard, myself included. Like, that's dumb, Apple. Why are you wasting your time on that brick that costs so much? Mine's got a hard drive. That's cool. Hopefully, it's going to be a little bit different. But this all hinges on what we've said before. I mean, if the deck, the deck just is going to win if it gets the attention of gamers, people who play video games, not tech enthusiasts, because I guarantee you the three of us and a lot of you in the audience are like, yes, give me a portable little Linux seat. See, you know, just computer that I can, oh yeah, plays games too. Yeah, if I want it to, but look, let's, let's play around with it and make it do cool things. Now, here's what I worry about. Here's what I worry about for the Steam Deck is surviving that first round of tech tubers and tech reviews from publications like PC Gamer because it's going to be a little rough. It is, because that's going to be a mix of what doesn't work. Let's focus on that first. Let's focus on that first because it'll get the clicks. Oh, followed by then. followed by a side of her Linux dumb. This why not work, install Windows or something like that. I mean, this is like not easy to suss out how it's going to play. Yeah, it, 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 again, it's, it's going to we're, we're going to see what's going to actually happen when actual units get in people's hands. <laughs> all, 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 all the talk from the devs who've been getting early units, it's, it's all, it's all well and good, but like when the rubber actually hits the road, is it going to be a good product? Yeah. That, that, that I'm very curious about what the average tech YouTuber is going to do. Like namely trying to install windows on it and failing miserably and then Pedro. blaming Linux for somehow mm-hmm. their own inability to install windows on it. Pedro, I um, just need you to think back just a maybe 45 minutes ago when Jordan was licking that cartridge. <laughs> To visualize how it's going Knowing to full well that Nintendo <laughs> did do the whole don't put it in your mouth thing. Yes. <laughs> I believe that Listen, was deliberate. 
I listen, that was a scientific experiment and that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. But you know, you know, let me channel minor some- uh, cave Johnson. Science isn't about why it's about, I don't know. Why Here, not? Here's the last thing on the steam deck. It's just a good thing that uh, steam has made sure that you know, people who are very competent and know how to like put the correct story forward have been uh, supplied review edits. Yes. But you know, maybe, maybe steam OS isn't your thing. Maybe you want to put something else on your steam deck or your I and Neo <laughs> yes. or, or literally know. say a, that uh, went on the floor. Uh, oh, the yeah, gaming yeah, PC crash, that you crash, crash. put right. together. <laughs> no, it was just my chapstick. Uh, the okay. uh, yeah, no. You, you put yourself a Steam box together, and then you need an operating system for it. Maybe, just maybe, Chimera OS is the one that you're looking at. And uh, this version 29 actually comes with some notable improvements, uh, especially for the Ioneo and the GPD Win 3, which are the big. Um, Steam get Steam Deck competitors actually, uh, the Ioneo especially since that also has a Ryzen APU in it, uh, and the the like the the very last point, Nvidia Optimus support has been improved for Chimera uh, twenty nine because that's still a thing in twenty twenty two. The uh, the fact I, that I mean, Linux P- P- Pedro. Some people just have old laptops that have NVIDIA GPUs. You wouldn't know anything about that, mm-hmm. would you? It, I'm actually missing a laptop with <laughs> with uh, the Optimus technology. But no, I, I actually mean the, the whole getting Optimus working properly on Linux because that's still a thing that we need to worry about in 2022. Honest, honestly, Come it's on. pretty slick. These, these, these days, like, <laughs> like I, I upgraded uh, my laptop in the other room. It's just... Uh, in, in, in the gym room there for just playing music, but it has, it has, uh, it has an Optimus GPU and you know, lo and behold, it still fucking works. The, 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 the setup that Aaron helped me with uh, a while ago is still pretty solid. And yeah, as long as these guys have a way yeah, to just once you get Nvidia the, prime going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. And that like the, the XORG for that is config is actually just like a little thing. So once you get that in place, yep. then you're pretty much good to go. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty dope to see. Now, uh, we're going to be living in a future where we're going to have deck spins. Like, you spin me right round, baby. Well, I mean, I, I, I was kind of shocked and amazed that deck spin.com like ham sandwich.com is also available, but you know, you're, you're going to see canonical based on Ubuntu type stuff. You're going to see Debian based, like stripped down just different spins that you could put on your deck and it's going to do decky things. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm I'm the, I'm going to be super interested to see for the deck. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to be super interested to see like once they release the generic Steam OS image, like how Chimera and it stack up. Especially if you want to say install Steam OS on an Aya Neo, mm. maybe <laughs> see how see how that goes. That could be interesting. I think on the first go, uh, the because Valve still haven't enabled um, the new deck uh, UI for regular. Steam OS, mm-hmm. even if you pass the uh, the ten foot flag, it still gives you the old big picture mode, as is the case with the uh, the Steam box there. The uh, yeah, once the two have the same UI, that's going to be a toss up because Chimera the way the thing that it does is uh, it has a little web server running that you can have uh, you can control a bunch of the configurations from just a browser. You just pull up the uh, address for the whatever system you have running that on your phone and you can control mango HUD and you can control emulator uh, configurations. You can control a bunch of other things with steam buddy. And that makes a big, big difference. (laughs) So no matter what spin you're going to be running on your deck, uh, you're just going to be too, you're going to be enthralled just because you're going to crack that box open and have that new deck smell. So Oh yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good times. <laughs> oh, please, please. Pl- oh, you know, eject button. Nope, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Let's talk about dragons. <laughs> okay. I'm done. Let's, let's, let's talk about something completely <laughs> different. Uh, Draconia. We are talking about new games Bitch, that are out there. That now. ain't a dragon. That's a pigeon. Uh, I mean, it's a pigeon dragon. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wouldn't fuck with it. Breathes fire and shit. Yeah. Uh, so Draconia, it's, um, it is a dragon based MMO. That's giving me some, Fairly substantial drag in the game flashbacks, mm-hmm. but it's more about uh, more about like creating clients, hatching eggs, doing dragony things. Uh, 
Uh, you you got to eat sheep. And apparently, apparently there is a lot of realistic carcasses strewn about the landscape from various dragons trying to nom nom on them. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is your jam. Maybe you just want to be a cool pigeon dragon and fly around the sky and eat sheep. Well, you're going to have to wait a little bit Ponder because rocks. it's coming soon to early access. Hopefully this is a better love story than dragon the game. Cause like that was, that was a turd. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I like their bit of self awareness and not calling it an MMORPG. It's just an MO RPG. It's like, oh, okay, not going to be that massive then. Cool. Hold on. <laughs> no. To what Jordan was saying, um, if you've been around for a long time, you remember the, um, everything that went down with the dragon, the game still yet to ever be finished. It was back when people had some expectation of quality, quality control in Steam. You know, this is mm. this was in the early days before the floodgates were wide open, and, and that somehow got through. And well, it's you got a little winged dragon that you fly around and do precisely fuck nothing. Uh, yeah. This this trailer, I was watching the trailer, and it continues that long tradition of dragons flying around, basically doing fuck all the game on Steam. So if you're a fan of Dragon, the game, uh, maybe maybe look into this. You can this do one has that PvP, with so. <laughs> You know, you'll be able yes. to do dragon and, fights. Uh, mirror to your point. No, not that's not that's the old dragon game that Jordan was referring to. Not, not yes. This mm. this is a different one. This is a new one. <laughs> so uh, uh, you 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 would be hard to t- hard pressed to tell the difference. But I'm I'm going to be yeah. an advocate for this one, at least until it releases in its complete shit. But until then, <laughs> all right. Uh, up next, uh, yeah. So. Free to play real time tactics game. That's the new one. No, it's it's just auto chest. This is skeletal schism. Uh, it's like I said, it's free to play. It's on Steam. Um, you, it's 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 an auto chest. So you grind for equipment. You uh, equip them to your dudes, and then you sit back and hope that your numbers are bigger than your opponent's numbers. And mm-hmm. rinse repeat. So, I mean, shit. It's an, it's another auto chest game. I guess if you're tired of Dota auto chests or the other one that's not Dota, that is by the exact same developers, you can try this. I don't know. Here's the thing, man. I think I remember when uh, the auto chess thing came out from Valve officially, and they're like, hey, it's auto chess. And uh, I think me and Joel tried to play it for an hour, and for an entire hour, neither of us still, to this date, know what the hell we were supposed to be doing or what we managed to accomplish. Now, if you want that in your life, check this out, though. This is free to play free to play which i did i downloaded it and i clicked go and it didn't fucking launch on linux not even a little bit i didn't even care Oops. enough to find out <laughs> what the exact error was but i tapped that proton button fam i did and uh i created a room because there were no no one was playing online so i created a room and then there was the one this is a free game to me playing online and it gave me a uh, ai opponent and it had like slow medium fast and flash and i click flash wiggled around a bit and it said it was a draw. So there's my review of, um, <laughs> it's a draw. Schism, yeah. <laughs> All right. But Hey, it launches with proton. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, cheap, cheap is free, right? You get what you pay for. You know what? M- maybe you don't. Cause, uh, if I bought a copy of Vermintide too, I wouldn't be able to play it. Yeah. Like, like I did. I still can't. Oh, right. So. <laughs> so this last little bit of steamy news is there. You will not be able to roll tide on your steam deck, at least according to fat shark hedge. One of the developers of vermin tide Ooh, I know. Right. So let's, uh, apparently EAC has two versions and they're not using new Coke, uh, which according to hedge is, has the one click business enabled. It's like, so the just a few click statement made in the original announcement wasn't entirely accurate and would only apply to titles using EOS version of EAC, which is like the OG version, of, according to them, which simply hasn't been many games, um, aside from either pretty new ones and likely predominantly Epic exclusive titles. We're still looking at it's ongoing possible. There may be other solutions and workarounds. So what they're worried about is if they got to use, uh, this it would require you to create an epic account login or something like that which uh pedro posted later on that uh this shouldn't be the case uh this is from flow yeah. all right prohala supports proton eac pass through and then users never asked to log into an egs account fat chart continues to investigate and all this stuff and this is backed up with yeah 
the Brawlhalla devs. Like, no, you just click the button, bro, and it works. As long as the AC loads, you should be able to just connect. Yes. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, the, this entire thing smacks of, uh, we don't really want to do it, so we're just going to come up with an excuse. There you go. You need to have the Epic Online Services version of EAC. That that's why we can't do it. Go, going going down through the through the forums, they're like, oh, well, we'll still have to perform some investigation to see how much work it takes to yeah, integrate no, the new people calling EAC. them out on it immediately, going, oh, but we're still doing but, investigation. When, 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 when asked, hey, is the new game Dark Tide gonna use the new AC? They're like, oh, we don't want to talk about that just yet. <laughs> you should pre-order it though. Get yeah. Sign up for our mailing. The list. One thing that really <laughs> took me away at the end of this, uh, which again, this could just be like, hey, nerds, shut up. We're not going to be dealing with your Linuxy people right now. And this post concludes with potentially asking our entire player base to connect through and sign, to connect through and sign through EOS for an honestly tiny market share. It's like, yeah, see, this would impact our real customers, not you Linux nerds. <laughs> and your tiny little market share. Like, did, tell me more about this, like, adjacent universe the, um, where the, the, he's a, the developer or a member of the, a team that is unaware of, like, the potential of the Steam Deck. Are we going to wait until after the fact and go, ah, hmm. Yes, they are. Okay. <laughs> because everyone's Absolutely. going, the Steam and- machines were shit. So we're going to wait to see how the Steam Deck, uh, Steam Deck actually does. Now, what I got to say I, 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 is <laughs> you can't fault him for that. But no, what you can I, fault I, him for is this fanfic bullshit. Like, I, now oh, we, no, now we have to go talk. Bullshit. Well, yeah. we don't know. I don't <laughs> know. I, I, I'm unfamiliar with the EAC backends. I didn't know there was new Coke EAC. So I'm going to have to go talk to somebody who won't try to spin anything. Yeah. And be like, yo. This and, is this is this and this is that. And that's what we're going to do. So there's your pro tip. If you're listening to this and like, hey, I'm thinking about doing some li- don't lie to the Linux user base. We'll fucking like we we, we we were talking about this a little bit too in the uh pre-pre super shows and about like, you know, Valve may have exaggerated a little bit when they said that it's a one click enablement. It's not the first time mm-hmm. that they have uh, you may have, have mis- and what I brought up was I'm almost my money currently is riding on Valve. Probably have thought about this one. Before they went out and said, "Hey, that this works. Uh, Everyone, go try it." By the way, in the brawl hall, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. all right, yeah, cool." Works. I, I, I mean, and if it's if it's two Han- different Hanlon's versions version, right? of EAC, mm-hmm. and the new version of EAC uh, has the Epic Online Services requirement, whatever that may be, apparently it doesn't work the same way that the developer thinks it does. But hey, the um, if the new version does allow for Proton connectivity. How long is the old version going to remain supported for? Three days. Shouldn't you be looking at maybe migrating over yeah, anyway? It's going to be on a Thursday. <laughs> because if you're going to ride that legacy train until it eventually doesn't work at all, then your game is just going to straight up fucking die. Here, here's what we're going to I be mean, running that, that's, into. That's what happens, though. Like, here's what get, we're like going player to services just die. Yeah. Right now, Games you're fly. dealing with a uh, <laughs> company that is being very smart because they're doing something that I take to heart. Right now, they're saying, not broke, don't fix. You know what? And a lot, a lot of studios, a lot of publishers are going to sit like this until they see, until they see how the Steam Deck's doing. Then they're yeah. going to want to taste that cheddar. Then you're going to see that rushy bullshit coming in. And it's going to be in our future, but we got to take what we can get because Valve, Valve's got to prove the viability of the Steam Deck. We have to prove the viability of the Steam Deck. Um, Developers yeah, have to prove the viability of the Steam Deck, right? Like, in, and it, you can afford it. That's the important bit. If you can afford it, yes, buying a Steam Deck will show these people that yes, there is a community of people who want to play these games and on using Linux. your Please. Steam Deck. Buy it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. some people so, are going to buy it, and they're like, "Put it on the wall. Look, it's a prop." <laughs> and, yeah, I, those are called YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So, coming up next, you can't spend your money on a Steam Deck because you got to buy a new Intel laptop to get those new hot XC graphics coming up. It's next. full of arcs. Build the arc. 
Wouldn't you know it? It's time for the news. Yeah, you probably already knew because you've been watching this long enough at this point, I would hope, because if this is your first episode, I'm not sorry. You Maybe clicked you on this. out randomly between segments. <laughs> we're, you we're clicked just on too this, intense. you did this to yourself. Oh, That's on you. You know what? Remember remember the old Pedro who would black out during jerkquisitions? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I remember what? the old empty who would black out during whatever. Like... <laughs> That happened uh, once. I genuinely don't remember whatever game we threw chairs at that night. It happened a couple times. Go. You just don't remember them. It's, uh, it's <laughs> that memory. It's going. If you if, if you want to help buy Pedro some more RAM, you can head on over to patreon.com slash next game cast. Yeah. Download, download some more RAM no, for man, Pedro I, Mateus. I'm just sitting here going, can I fit that on a t-shirt? Yes, <laughs> you absolutely can. Well, Absolutely. Yeah, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. It's a cool place. You can uh, subscribe to our Patreon, get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast, if you're not watching us live, as Pedro mentioned. Um, yeah, uh, you get other cool stuff like uh, early show note access at the Death Notes level. Uh, at the executive producer level, you get a custom RSS feed for the video form of the pre-pre-super shows and that extra special hour-long podcast where I taste various video game cartridges and give you my honest hey, review. You're just popping in. This is, this is a thing that happened in real time this <laughs> yes. week. Yes. We got the full experience. Oh, yeah, and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm like the Gordon Ramsay of video games. It was like a five-minute experience, too. It wasn't just one and done. But, Pedro, no. we got some new people to thank this week because we got Turdover who's just entered the hollowed halls of Death Notes. Which unlocks yes. a couple of special bonus sodas. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast to find out what those are. But new patrons, my favorite kind, fresh ones right off the vine that rhymed just in time. I'm out. I'll never get any more than that. JPX, That's a crime. new pat, well played. JPX, new patron, cheese bacon, brand new patron. And we got a gang of uh, Twitch, Twitch subs, subs. Katana, yes. Nubin, Gamatron, and Don M. Yeah. Hey, look yeah. at it this way. It's a good way to take money out of Amazon's pocket and give yeah, it to us. They're, yeah, they're, they're spending that money anyways. You might as well just send it that way. Yeah. Uh we we got we got a store yep. as well. If you just want to shout from the rooftops how much you love Linux Game Cast, we got t-shirts, we got stickers. We don't have masks anymore, but we do have coffee cups and we do have hoodies. So, you know, you can cover you can cover yourself. You can you can drink some nondescript liquid out of your Hell Elks mug and make people at work really if you still have to go into the office or if you're on like video meetings really question what is actually in there to see how long um, you can get it until somebody yeah like, uh, why, why? And just just put fill fill that up with a nice glass of milk and just wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute okay we we got to play this out in real time everyone okay so we're on a let let's just say our names. Uh, Major Pateus, and we have to be on a um, conference call for work related stuff, maybe. <laughs> and uh, Pedro's sipping out of his Hell Elks mug. Yeah. So I'm going to say an Hell Elks. <sighs> He's a member of the Missoula Elks Lodge. <laughs> oh, we, we, we got Linus the first video Lin result, though. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Hellgate Elks Lodge. Okay. It's not actually Hell Elks. It's just Hell in front of. Oh, yeah, we got number one. Yeah, number yeah. one. Um, <laughs> number one in the pictures. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, um, you know, we're, we're, we're the helliest of all the Elks. We got, uh, we got, uh, other ways to support us as well. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, mouse over that support button. We got, we got PayPal links. We got Bitcoin shitcoin links. We got our Amazon wish lists. Ben has one, Jill has one, I have one, Pedro has one. And do you yeah, know what Pedro have, really needs? Four hundred dollar audio cables, sandpaper. Oh, I just bought some. <laughs> I do I bought have some, some sandpaper there. Yes, well, the other day, yeah. I, I cackle because, like, I do have the Amazon brick of sandpaper. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, <laughs> effectively. I, that's just waiting because I'm almost out. So that's just going to be the next one that I buy. <laughs> what do you need? Uh, high spec hand and needle file tool. All right. All right. You're going to shave yourself. Uh, Loba, yes, files, yes. Tubular <laughs> files and shaving bits. <laughs> Fans. All right. That, that's kind of rag. Let's see. Oh, here's one for the studio. If you want your name back here, that's how you end up doing that, but don't tell anybody. Cause 
There's limited space available. Uh, this is just boring studio stuff that we use for the show. But Jordan, oh, uh, you gotta re- you gotta refresh that. I've added some stuff. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> am I gonna regret this in real time? Uh, here we go. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> there we yeah. go. There, what, there's what some audio see? file cables there. I listen. Three thousand dollar RCA audio cables, five meters. <laughs> Four thousand dollar, Ben. Four thousand dollar. <laughs> oh man, see, this is the thing, man. I was, I was gonna say, hey, RGB sound card. Jordan's like, fuck no, we can go dumber. Watch. <laughs> yeah, I, I may or may not take this wish list seriously at all. So I may end up with some very expensive sound sound cables. I don't know. You see, this is why I keep it limited to studio stuff because I've always joked about that and you think I'm joking and I'm not. That's why I am like, it'd be funny to put a 50 gallon thing of lube on there. Where do I put this? God damn it. <laughs> well, like, now, now I need to find a use for 50 gallons of lube, right? Okay, like, Jordan, you're thinking like me and it's like followed by the Google search alternative uses for, right? Right. Like, yeah, exactly. well, not, now that you have I it. bathe in it. Right. <laughs> Like, what, what, what can I get away with? If hey, beautiful people. Up. Thanks for supporting us all this time. Hopefully we're bringing some joy, bring some entertainment. We'll do it live every Saturday night. We invite you to come pop in. Speaking of that, if you are a Twitch sub or patron, we got our Discord. That's where we hang out there the six days a week. And things get into it. If you, if you want to talk about crazy overpriced cables, what we're doing, not just Linux stuff, whatever else we got going on. And, uh, of course, uh, come check out Jordan because he's doing the Cybertrucks on Thursday. And I'll be back Wednesday for Weekly Daily Wednesdays with one Joe Bryant, who is fresh returned from a trip to Disneyland. All right. Disney World! Disneyland. <laughs> let's talk about Disney World. Let's talk about some shit that just pissed everybody off. What am I talking about? I'm talking yeah, about the Intel announcement at CES. Let's talk about Intel not actually revealing anything that people wanted to hear. Instead, you we shall. got some... Uh, uh, yeah, no, it said we got some uh, XESS uh, or XS, uh, XS announcements, which is, yeah, it's uh, Intel's version of DLSS, which is a AI enhanced heavy, heavier quotes around AI there. Um, but it, it's a super sampling bit like DLSS does. And this one, Intel claims that they're, go- they're they'll be making it as available to every other video card out there as they can. So a vendor neutral version of that sounds very good. Literally anything that takes away uh, NVIDIA's market dominance because yeah. They, they, that's, they've been that's at the top too thing. long. Got a little lazy yep. up there. <laughs> How dare you? I so, love, hang on. Now I got hope Pedro Mateus because Intel's walking out and they're like, you know what? Spray and pray. Vin, what do you mean spray? 50 SKUs are being launched. <laughs> for laptops now, yeah, most, of those, most of those are laptops now you say most which that I will not argue with but during the presentation they said um, they're shipping out to OEM and partners so they did not Yes, we're, we're getting this stuff out there they gotta make the video card support which is gonna be interesting because I really want to see an ROG uh, Intel and uh, like an MSI <laughs> Intel Republic of Gamers yeah. yeah, Asus does do both AMD oh, shit. and oh, Nvidia. Shit. I just so thought of something. Doing it. Okay, you know how Nvidia's got like the dumb like uh, things for their add-in board partners. It's like it must you must be able to read Nvidia from the top of the card at a distance of four kilometers, and uh, or else you can't make the card. This is a true thing. This is why you see fucking Nvidia and GeForce plastered on the top of every damn Nvidia card ever. That's a requirement they have to do. Intel, there's still time. Force them to only let, if it's got RGB, it can only have B. It's got a blink blue, baby. Oh, no, it's hot pink <laughs> RGBs Like constantly. my new kettle. <laughs> Jill would instantly buy one. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, the, the article is also talking a lot about, oh, the benefits of running an Intel CPU and Intel GPU. And, yeah, of, co- of course they're going to be putting out laptops because Intel would just love you to have to buy an entirely new computer if you want to upgrade a single component. Oh, yeah. They, they, tra- they tried Intel. that shit. <laughs> yeah, they they tried that shit with BGA and CPUs until everyone lost their goddamn minds. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, but we, we've, we've been talking this up for a while. We just want that like $350, like 
$350, 2070-ish Intel GPU. Just yes. Something, man. Give yes. us. Oh, yeah. Give oh, us. Yeah. Give For, us. Just, I mean, <laughs> just. Just anything, man, because I think like a lot of people, I, I, I intentionally, I watched the C, I didn't even flying fuck about CES, but Intel was going to say the things and like, okay, cut out some time. Let's sit down. Let's watch this. Didn't say anything. Oh, it was just laptops, 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 which is awesome if you're in the market of laptops. I'm not, I, I'm just a little career. I'm like, I would like to make a budget for 2021 or what we can buy and what we can. And like, at least give me like some dates or some performance from like, where do I, how do I allocate the resources for this? Nope. So yeah, not getting out any specs for the GPU. Uh, it's just maybe some prices that'd be nice, but mm, no, nothing. Now, to get a little bit of faith though, because he, even in that announcement, they're like, "Hey, this thing's going to work well with the DaVinci Resolve." So that's one of the big tech boxes for me, and we'll, we'll see what the, the, the quick sync and their new hybrid uh, that you can use the GPU and. the if you have an Intel CPU, you can use the GPU there yeah. and the dedicated Intel GPU and the two share the workload. That, that's very neat. Because I need a media production card. <laughs> that can also play video games a little bit. Yep. Yeah. H- heterogeneous <laughs> compute is going to be interesting because AMD has been playing at that for a while. I'm serious. I'm curious what Intel is going to do when they actually do a serious uh, stab at it. So. No, you're not. You're going to be too busy enjoying your new NVIDIA card that is now super cheap, super effective. And you can pick one up. For two forty nine, just head over to your local NVIDIA card store, and they're all over the shelves, man. You're going to trip over some in the mailing department. Mm-hmm. Did you see Strider post that picture? Did everyone see that in Discord? Wait, which which one? You got to be more specific. Oh, the, the picture of a 3060 Ti. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like, why haven't you stolen it already? He, he just <laughs> went down to his apartment's like mail room, and mm, there was just a straight up there. A 3060 Ti in the NVIDIA box with like a name on it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do never want to be in that position because even See, like you don't take a picture, you just take it and you go away and hope see, no one see, the, 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 pro- <laughs> the problem is like the dungeon master in me sees that and immediately thinks, Oh, that's a fucking trap. My, There's my, like bees inside. Uh, that my first thought, even like <laughs> me, I am not a TV person, but you're, you're in that position. You're not going to do anything, but you know what you are going to do? You're not going to be able to yeah. help yourself. You're going to look around for cameras, even though no, you're, 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 you're yes. not going to touch it's it. like, where's the camera? <laughs> you're you're, you're, you're going to fantasize it. You're going to like reach out your hand and be like, no. Oh, I just feel like I could if I, we could, but yeah, whatever. And, uh, but no, <laughs> NVIDIA dropped this announcing the budget RTX 3050 graphics card arriving this month, 249. We've been waiting for something. Anything, anything, just, yeah. just give it, give it to us. NVIDIA. Uh, we're such, uh, this is what a pity fuck GPU looks like, huh? All right. Okay. Eight gigs in GDDR6. It's a 50 series card. RT performance, 18 teraflops, 73 other te- tensor flops, uh, availability, January 27th price, 249. Uh, now the 3050 Brings to the table what a little DLSS hmm? and ray tracing. Yep. Okay, little, little, it brings little. tensor uh-huh. cores effectively. Now, <laughs> tensor cores and ray tracing now, bits. To all of you who looked at my uh, attempts to do some ray tracing with my 2060 gaming juggernaut piece of silicon that I apparently fucking own in this modern day, I don't even want to. I out of outside of comedic value, I don't want to know what the uh, 3050 is going to be doing for it. But you know what? I think the thing that really bugged everyone more than anything else during this entire announcement was let's call it the tie. It's the 3050 the tie. tie. <laughs> or the 3090 <laughs> tie. Uh-uh. You're not, you're not, you can't die. I don't know. That's, that's some log forge shit right there. Dude. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I hope there's like something legitimate like, oh, speaking of like, okay, yeah, the 3090 NVIDIA, did you really need to walk out? God damn. Uh, in the, it's like, uh, we're, we're going to have a 3090. It's even faster. It's the 3090 Ti and it's $1,600. That is walking. That, that's some bullshit right there. All right. That, 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 that's like taking a drink out of like your super gold when you're surrounded by people dying of thirst. Just like a mm-hmm. can, man. But. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I guess I welcome our new RTX 3050 GTX T tie. I'm sorry, NVIDIA tie. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, they I, can uh, keep that. <laughs> but it is more expensive, especially... Nvidia brought back the 1050 Ti in 2021, and Pedro, the 1050 um, Ti. Uh, uh, I'm here to inform you, uh, it's Ti. Yes. Okay. Sorry. The 1050 T. Ti was <laughs> just piss everyone. Was off. a uh, 109 dollar MSRP GPU. 109. Mm-hmm. So Should, you're adding another. Wait a, minute. wait a minute. Are you telling me things in the past cost less? <laughs> yes. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, so, I don't know. It's okay, a significant sorry. markup for a 50 series card. Everything has a significant markup, though. Everything. It's the MSRP is not gonna not gonna matter. Like here, here, here's the thing. I would love to dump the RX 580 out of my t- Steam bo- or out of my TV box. Replace that with the 3050 Ti. That would be a pretty good upgrade for it. I can give the, the older card to the kid as hand me down. I'm 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 in business. I can I can play some I can play some games on the TV box. That's really the the value add I see here. Um, or just people who are like stuck on like seven fifties or whatever that are just looking for any. Sort well, you got to think about. It. I mean, the entire chain's jacked up. The, a the existence of something like this just shows you that the chain's jacked up because we, we're definitely in the current situation. I, I was looking at eBay. I talked about this on Wednesday. Like, what what could I sell my twenty sixty four on eBay? And I sorted by what they've actually sold for 500 bucks is the average price. And that's like the low end right there. So where we're at right now in 2022 is like teenage Vin uh, in this reality that we're currently in can't buy, you know, a 2060 like TV box or something that kind of game for like 150, 200 bucks used on eBay right now. That just doesn't exist. I mean, the something for that market is just gone and that's depressing as fuck, man. Like how do you, you, there's no way to do a budget build like at all no. at all. I, I, I get, I guess the solution is like make cards that miners just don't want, I guess. But that's the thing. As long as it can do any kind of compute, any kind of maths, it can mine and it will mine because that that's, that's the only thing that GPUs are good for. And yeah, the, outside of just doing a build with maybe an APU, with just using the integrated graphics that, that because the 5700 G is fairly cheap. The only it thing it is a very bad option, but that is like the option is like, yeah, let's just do integrated and hope we can wait this out. And I'll tell yep. you, I'll tell you when it's over and I'll tell you when it's done with. It's not when this new bullshit cards available that, that has nothing to do with anything. The shortage bullshit is over when you can go on eBay and buy a 2070 for 200 bucks. Oh, that's that's a fucking dream. That's a that's that is a yes, nice dream. But, I've but ever in a correct market with proper supply, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, a last gen mid range card, about two hundred bucks. That's yep. what yes. Glory would have right now is to replace that ten fifty mm-hmm. Ti. It would be like a I'm, ITX I'm, size. If you tried to take somebody's twenty seventy right now, hey, that person's doing victory laps. They're like, I did, I did good. I'm holding on to this thing forever. Now they try to catch I'm, you. I'm, I'm still mad I didn't grab one of those cheap EVGA 2070s back when they were on clearance. Motherfucker. Mm. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. God, $350 <sighs> 1080 Ti is like, all right, I have a 1080. I don't need one of them. <laughs> if only I well, we, we all we all <laughs> fucked up. Oh, man. Uh, I do keep track of used market prices, though, Atomic. And we're not talking about fucking inflation on used goods, son. But keep going. Good try. Good try. So let's talk about... <laughs> Linux desktop gaming product management. That's something everyone has to do at some point in their life. And, um, well, you might have the need. Say you had, I don't know, off the top of my head, maybe a company with um, maybe 700 employees located in the UK. And uh, maybe, mayhaps, you your primary thing is services for your Linux distribution. Hmm. You're going to be talking about probably, uh, anyway, here's the thing. Linux desktop gaming product manager. I was just trying to have some fun with this. Uh, Canonical is looking for one. You got one? They will gladly take it. And it seems like a couple people are talking about it. And they're like, hey, man, maybe I want to get into that. I mean, it, it, it's pretty decent. You know, I, I like the idea ah. of this position. I do. I do. Uh, but only it's like looking at it for Canonical, the creators of Ubuntu. I look at it as kind of like a challenge. This is an exceptional opportunity for competitive technology leaders who 
Lead desktop graphics choices, drive partnerships in the graphics silicon desktop gaming spheres. Tell the story, <laughs> Bran, Bran Mutu Gamers. Um, lead engineering, design and development. What are you going to be doing? You're going to be part of a rap- rapidly glow- growing team, yes. Shape rapidly the messages, glowing. glowing and growing, then <laughs> create effective marketing content, be accountable for the product roadmap, and uh, work with Canonical's desktop engineering teams to ensure da 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 da. What do you bring for the team? Three years software engineering experience, proven leadership, da 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 da. All this yeah, so in our I, show notes. I, I, I've successfully bullied Pedro into applying for this yes, position. You have. Yes, you have. Um, <laughs> yeah, you and me. <laughs> it didn't take much. I mean, this this is like <laughs> this was not terribly difficult, but no. You, this, you, needed, you needed a bit of a push. I just uh, give him a shove. <laughs> it looks like they're wanting a software engineer with strong people and leadership skills who wants to become management. <laughs> They're looking for a unicorn, yes. Con- canonical. Uh, oh, also, they need to brand. They need to be able to tell the best story. I pray you do not get this person because that sounds like horrible, horrible amalgam of unicorn. A, that person doesn't exist. B, no, uh, you just don't want that person. No, Jordan, you disagree with me a little bit because I, I think this reads more like not what I would look for, but this looks like more marketing PR versus, you know, this type of position, you know, let's, let's, let's put a good face on things versus we want somebody to come in, break some shit, realign some things, and let's see if we can rework this into a viable, like, campaign. So here's the thing, though, given Ubuntu's track record and coming in and breaking things and making better stuff, they tend to get stuck on the, the second part. Uh, that said though, having a highly competent, knowledgeable person come in with their best foot forward to at least try to make a Ubuntu as game friendly as possible is a good thing. Even if that effort doesn't actually pan out a bunch of like, cause th- that, that tells, that tells us something about like a bunch as the company, right? A bunch has fallen out of favor with the gaming crowd. You see a lot of people suggesting, uh, more derivatives like arch, like mint. Um, other, other, other distributions Manjaro. and <laughs> Manjaro. Yeah. And you know, Ubuntu as a company that ostensibly cares about their product probably has to do something to try and win them over. And if they don't take it seriously, then well, they deserve whatever they get out of that investment, right? If they're going to be bringing on someone and paying them a salary and not actually listening to their, their, their knowledgeable position after about 10 years of, you know, Linux coverage of gaming technology. This is what worries me is you're going to get that person, that person that wants to come in. They are like, hey, man, we can make a difference. We can work together and we can sort this out. Like, we're not fucking interested in doing that. Now get out there and make another tweet about how the gaming stuff's awesome and we do it. Tweet. Well, like, 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 like I said, had, and bring me a, a coffee. Good per- yeah. And have, have, having a person there, may, 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 maybe, maybe some sort of Peter Matthews individual could... Move, move the organization in the direction that it needs to move. And I will say that uh, we've seen the departure of some, I'm not naming names, uh, by their own omission, of people who were dissatisfied with their inability to affect change. Yes. Especially so, with uh, what we're going to be talking about next, but yes. <laughs> but, you know, you, but you know what? You, you, you can go into a situation expecting to fail and then, you know, dooming yourself to do so. Or you can... Uh, here's the thing. Give it a I shot. very much applied to this not knowing anything, especially what the pay is going to be uh, or any of the specifics of what that will actually entail. But I applied. And I'll keep you all up to date with how that's going to go. If you're on Discord, you probably already saw a couple of those. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I look forward to the email. They're like, they said I could have the job, but in the three shot, I got to be upside down. Yeah. You know, that would be the least of my worries. <laughs> you have you have to exclusively dress like in orange and brown. Nick with a canonical logo. Fine. That's no, okay. no, no, you, you, you replace Nick with Shuttleworth. <laughs> that, that's, that's where we're at. Mm-hmm. All right, now let, 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 let's not sabotage <laughs> Pinterest's chances of getting this job anymore. Let's talk about, let's talk about the heroic game launcher. You know, uh, that other game, you know, that other game store that P- you can buy. Well, you don't buy PC games off of it. You get free PC games off of it mm-hmm. and then you install them through uh, Lutris or heroic games launcher. Uh, they have, uh, they recently released uh, 2.0. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. 
And this is just an up, a link uh, or uh, article on their Patreon saying, what's going on next? What are, what are their goals for 2022 moving forward? Uh, the two big ones they talk about are getting uh, getting Heroic on Flathub, which they're in the process of doing that, which will get it on a lot of the graphical stores like um, the Arch Package Manager, the Ubuntu store, the GNOME Software Center. Um, just make it really easy to get Heroic up and running. Um, and... That, that's that's a good that's a good thing, right? Um, you know, Lutris is also a good way of getting your Epic Games up and running, but maybe you want a more specialized program that will just handle that stuff, provide the services that Epic refuses to provide for their own, you know, product. Um, the other the other goal here is that they want to add uh, external app support. So you know how Steam lets you launch non Steam games through Steam, and you get the overlay and the remote play stuff. They want to include that as well, and just treat it as more of a uh, more of a generic wine launcher. And I think that's a that's a that's a cool idea. And I wish them the best for it. So, you know, good, good on you, Heroic. You're chugging along, doing the work that Tim's not ordering his employees to do. So now yeah. I, I love this. Uh, I want everybody to go back and check out the notes tomorrow because I, I made a joke and I, I honestly, there's like some Pedro super position. I'm like, did you take it seriously? Or are you, are you already winding up for the position? I, I think because uh, my joke, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, was now Pedro will tell you why snap is a superior solution. The flat back. <laughs> I got the joke, which is precisely why I said what I did. It's like since the beginning, I've been shouting that flat packs are the better option, and uh, yes, it, it they are. And the, if we're being serious, um, Valve themselves they decided to take flat packs and they turned them into pressure vessel. And if if that doesn't tell you anything, it's like, well, have you really been paying attention to the whole gaming thing that's been happening on Linux since, what was it, 2012? That uh, the beta came out for Steam? Yeah, it's what Valve says goes because they hold the market in their hands. So they're spe- they're also yes. spending the money on actually pushing yeah. the technology. <laughs> they're they're they funding the development for the gaming stuff. And like, here's the thing, man. Like, I, I mean, I absolutely get like Steam and Heroic, even to a new extent, OBS makes sense as a flat pack. It's a lot of moving parts and things like that. I'm like, yeah, I, I understand where they're doing it. 100%. Plus, plus like, you know, one, one click installs are nice. Not having to like deal with, you know, synaptic or apt or yum, just yeah. get it done. You have, okay. You have a lot more space requirements because you need the runtime, but with flat packs, you have the one runtime for everything. And like, Man, I've I've been doing a lot of reading into like the OS tree um, <laughs> deployment model just because like Fedora is moving to it, um, mm-hmm. or they're looking to move with that uh, on uh, Kinoite and uh, Silverblue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's becoming the main thing. It's it's actually a really really interesting ecosystem that does a good job of supporting like oh you want like your own custom compiled packages versus like layering it on top of the container runtimes. It's a, it's actually pretty slick. I got I got to admit they have done put a lot of thought into it there's still some security model issues but that's the case with fucking everything man like yeah, yeah. <laughs> scum vm Any, scum vm uh, th- no, normally we like talking about this one because this is one of those long-standing linux gaming stalwarts this is what enables you to play a lot of old games natively under linux it's I mean, what it's, a lot of old games are using element to- in your um linux gaming library yeah, it, it, it's essentially how to get like retro PC games up and running, much to the point where like when they re-released Myst and like the Double Fine, the uh, the Lucas Arts games, they just fucking ran them in scum because why would you want to redevelop stuff? Uh, but yeah. they have a new release out, uh, two five zero Californium, and it's not very exciting. Uh, a lot of it is just um, it's just emulation and, uh, accuracy fixes, bug fixes. When you're auto saving now, Scum will automatically not try to or run with, when you're doing a save, Scum will automatically now try to not overwrite your auto saves if you have it periodically saving, which is really nice. And also, graphical scaling will work on the OpenGL backend, so you can make your that's, little tiny manic mansion that's a big, big manic mansion. So no, yeah, good proper stuff. scaling for ga- old games that are rendered at a very low resolution. That's big. That's really nice, and that will probably actually make a lot of people who rely on scum vm to play those older games very very happy because if you've tried to use any of the integrated scalers with any um like dosbox or something emulator or... 
Yeah, emu any emulator or even you, the one built into your monitor. If you have an old game that only renders at 800 by 600 and you tell it to go full screen on Windows and it does the exclusive full screen thing and it uses your monitor's own internal uh, scaler, it looks like butt. It looks like three kinds of rewarmed ass. Pedro Mateus, at it's, the end of the day, I don't care what it looks like. I just want to know, can I make it go fast? Probably, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, that, that, that's not, the not big without thing. latency flex. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you really want to make it go fax, uh, fax, fax, no, fast. Nope, fax. No fax. <laughs> I need latency fax. FX, FX, yes. Uh, yeah, the um, with latency FX, they are very much trying to introduce um, something that'll bring you a competitive advantage, as they say. They, they show the example with the uh, graph yes, there for split gate with the 5700 XT, and they are claiming up to 10 milliseconds of uh, input latency reduction. Now, input latency reduction is okay. It, 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 it is very important if you're de dealing with any kind of competitive uh, level gaming. But the limitations that they introduce, uh, which is um, if you have VSync on, you're not getting any uh, latency input latency reduction, which is kind of to be expected because you're VSyncing, so you're only getting one frame every V blank. That, that's kind of how that works. And um, it will introduce some jitter or some micro stuttering uh, when you're using latency flex. Okay, fair enough. That that that's the kind of stuff that happens when you're not using VSync. If you're not using VSync at all, uh, or any kind of compositing, you will uh, get. See, I gotta um, give Basil credit. He timed that well. He's like, wait till Pedro was on screen. That was very good. <laughs> Twenty-four month race up too. Uh, it's uh, it's it's an interesting concept because without any compositing or any VSync, the only thing that you would then need to worry about is tearing. If latency flex can introduce that uh, input latency compensation or reduce the uh, the amount of uh, or the time of limp put latency, limp put latency, with your brand level explanation of yeah, shit go fast. I, I mean, your, uh, yes, your, your, your mileage is your, your mileage is going to vary though, um, because you know this is doing this is doing process injection. It is doing fucky stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, you may trip some anti-cheat. They do say that the Proton hook is substantially safer than the native UE4 one, but the devs do take no responsibility if you get ban hammered. Mm. And at the, the end of the day, there's even an option Mango HUD, so you can see how much faster you got to go fasting. Got to go fasting. Mm -hmm. mm. Got to go fasting. It's, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's like Sonic at Yom Kippur. <laughs> gotta go fasting. Amen. <laughs> yeah, no, if this eliminates tearing while providing that latency reduction... That that's very good. A lot of people will take the micro stuttering over the input latency any day of the week. So plus it gives you a new excuse. If you get banned for actually cheating, you can be like, no, I was just using latency flex. Gotta read <laughs> oh, it. Like, no. <laughs> Here's the thing. But the three of us, all three of us are too old for this to matter in any way, shape, form or fashion. And this needs to be uh, introduced into the game itself because this is an NVIDIA reflex yeah. alternative. This needs to have so an 18 you're not just going to, on it. Yeah, you're not just going to be able to load this unless, glorious egg roll, you're up for or, a challenge. Or, oh, fuck. Or uh, why, why, Proton Tricks. <laughs> I think that would be the better way of handling that. Just have a little yes. expertise to do it. Because you do have to go into the wine prefix and do some shit. Yeah, the installation is mm -hmm. not straightforward. Maybe, but maybe they can integrate it into the Steam Deck so you can really have that snap accuracy in CSGO with your uh, joysticks. Yeah, and then and then get banned immediately after. Yeah. It's great. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, we got to go to www.hackertyper.net because, oh boy, this game did. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Midnight Protocol by Legoose Studios, done on Unity. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks. What is the game? Midnight Protocol is a tactical, narrative-driven RPG with unique keyboard-only controls. Hack into servers, beat security systems, and discover encrypted secrets while you try to find the answers to why and how you got doxxed. I know how. You just browse the website while not using Tor. Facebook. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, 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 uh, what's the chair acquisition, you might ask? Well, it's when we take uh, we take a video game like this. We run it on three different Linux distributions with a fairly different hardware between the uh, three of them. And then using our highly, highly scientific, divinely ordained chair ranking system, we will give you a final score from between one and four chairs. And you can determine the meanings behind that. There's a little pop-up graphic that will tell you if you can't figure that out already. Uh, we got to thank Lugu Studios for sending us some keys over Creator Connect. And I guess we're just going down the line, aren't we? Uh, you, want, you want Pedro to go first? No, no, no. We, we got timers, so um, let's just make sure we stick with them. Starting off, click. There we go. Hey, <laughs> how does it run on Debian 11? You know, the best gaming system in the... I don't know, man. I, I run Debian 11 on everything. On a Threadripper 1920X, which I've been told by Reddit, it's horrible for gaming because they all run Windows and, and, you know, Windows has a problem with Threadripper. But if you have a keyboard, you're good. Got a 2060. Didn't really push it on this deal. Windowed full screen, no problems there. Happy to see that. That main menu tune, I might be alone, man, but it kind of reminded me for some reason of like Nier. I don't understand what it was, but there was something in there that had my automatic tomatoes tingling. No. When it comes to fun, right out of the gate, you kind of know you're in for some of that artistic vision bullshit because it's like, hey, this game only works with a keyboard. Fuck off. Keyboards only. All right, fine. Whatever. Turns out I had a keyboard in front of me because I was in front of the computer, so let's go with it. But I'm going to say sorry, not sorry for that. Limiting my options and inputs makes me a little grumpy. It doesn't matter what type of game it is. It just does. Now, this is a hacking game where you play, you guessed it, you have a video Hackatron 9000, like all these games do, in a future where pointing devices never existed. Keyboard only. Again, turn-based single-player combat. That, that, that's what it is. You know, at least as tab complete, I think we can all agree. That they, thank you. Um, it's your standard boobin enemy. You manage some resources. It's, it's that game, but with more typing. Plus a bunch of busy work between those segments uh, to kind of pad out the actual gameplay. RNG is alive and well in your midnight protocol, but keeping track of those hacking commands was a bit of a chore. Even with the tab complete, remembering what does what, that was kind of a problem with my old ass, but it is easy enough to figure out. And um, you know what? It, it, I mean, it does feel like borderline work is what I'm going to try to say here, man. Not necessarily um, like work, work, not like borderline at all. It is work. <laughs> not like it's a chore. Not like I'm being put to task. No, 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 no. It, it's just like typing in a terminal is a little too real for our crowd. I'm just going to say for myself, man, I made it all the way to the having to search for something in like the in-between game section nonsense. And I kind of called it a day at that, but Hey, it's got a demo. I suggest giving that a little bit of a nibble before dropping your 14 wet stinky caches on it and see if it's your thing. I mean, this is turn-based typing. It's the typing of the uh, combat, whatever you want to call it. Not necessarily my jam, but I had a good time with what I played around with. And on the technical side, everything sort of worked. So I give it a sort of one. Boom. Time to spare. Ha ha. All right. Well, on Fedora 35, 64 bit with the R9 3D 100X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. There is a lot of typing in this game. No mouse or controller for you. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. Um, graphics are pretty simple. I guess programmer art is an intended pun, but like the visual metaphor of the network graphs works. If you've used Packet Tracer before, you've played this game. The music is pretty standard techno beep boop. And if you really care about it, you can shut the screen fuzzies off in the options. Otherwise, fairly limited options. Fun wise, well, it's it's kind of fun. Find it, kind of. It's it's a deck building puzzle game where you have about five pro programs and a certain number of turns to do some stuff. And sometimes with your programs, you can extend the number of turns. And the challenge is picking the five tools that will let you get the most done in the least amount of time on a per level basis uh, before you get caught. And uh, part and that part comes from grinding a bunch of easy side quests to gain a bunch of these programs so that you can like tailor make your cyber Pokemon party to go take on uh, your enemy networks. Um, that's it though. There's a lot of waiting when it comes to the actual gameplay itself. Sometimes the best move is just to kind of sit there and do nothing and let your programs tick away while you're accomplishing the goals that they give you. And then it starts to get a little tedious, but I think the I think the the uh, saving grace here is the missions are short enough that this can be a pick up and play like coffee break game. You're not going to be spending more than 10 minutes on like a single thing. So that's not too bad. Um, 
And you know, you know the the actual network hunting. Yeah, it's 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 fictionalized hacking, but it does a decent enough job. Tab completion is a thing. Uh, I read the instructions before getting into the game, and I got a little I got a little worried about the complexity. But like the tutorial does a decent job of bringing you up to speed. The narrative, though, there is a narrative here, and it's a bunch of emails. Please, please do not make me read and type emails for fun. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. I got to do enough of that shit on my weekly job basis. I don't want to yes. have to, I don't want to have to do that shit anymore. And like, okay, you can tab complete like the cinematic typing, but the fact that they don't tell you that right away and you're like, oh, I got to actually like type the same number of characters in the emails. Yeah, screw that. Uh, I'm going to give it two chairs. There's good stuff in here. There's like definitely work put into the game. It's not lazy. Um, but I feel it has a bit of a limited shelf life. That's going to hurt it in the long run. Yeah, it it, it uh, absolutely absolutely does. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It holds 144 FPS at 2560 by 1440. I do like the ominous background music, but it doesn't really seem to fit in with the gameplay. It has flashier graphics than most of the other hacking games that I've tried up up to now, so kudos to them for that. And yes, as has already been mentioned, uh, this is a keyboard-only affair. As for the fun, you know, for a moment there, I thought this would be the one. This would be the hacking game that changed my mind on the, on the genre. Mostly because it's not a hacking game. It's, it, it, it is technically a hacking game on the surface, yes. But when you look at how the mechanics behave and the heavy reliance on the story to justify or at least attempt to give some context to the ridiculousness of it all, uh, it's a text-based adventure RPG. You type to do quests and you get money. And with the money, you buy equipment and upgrades and then you do more quests. I... <laughs> I think that idea was solidified in my head when the dagger program that you use to bring down the firewalls, the the animation that it does and how it deals damage to the firewalls is like, yeah, that's straight up an RPG. Cool. Right. So, <laughs> uh, but the more I played the game, and much like Jordan and much like Ven, I realized just how much like work this was. Because yes, you're answering emails and then you're trying to guess the syntax on a uh, command line to get your work done that that yeah doing also that menial map things. command is not an nmap command yes. i'm sorry fuck it <laughs> and uh, but but yeah the the doing menial things for minor or no reward it's just busy work to progress what passes for a story which is conveyed via emails I've mentioned this time and time again that video games as an art medium are unique in the way that they combine visual, um, video, audio, and interactivity. It's like they have everything except like physical things you can touch, basically. A, there's no sculpture in video games, n not physical anyway, but... All of those elements, all of those individual elements are completely disparate here. The video and the audio don't really match up. The story doesn't really match up with the interactivity. Yes, you could call it uh, Ludo Donkey Disco Bobbles, if you'd like, but it's not... You could literally... Those emails could be gibberish. They could be Laura Mipsum. It doesn't matter. But it's not a bad game. It does some interesting things, but it just wasn't enough for me. Two chairs. Yeah, I was looking at the clock. <laughs> Well, there, you, there you go. It's kind of a middle of the road game. Uh, I know, I know, Jill really likes it. I know Katana in our audience also really likes so, it. He uh, dumped like twenty hours in there. Uh, I'm watching Pedro's video, and I'm in flashback. Like, you know what? And instead of have like this convoluted like slice system for, could, could, could we all agree? Like, just let me open up HTOP. <laughs> Uh, H top or you know, let me use the mouse to nope. like nope. allocate the in this processes to the different no, 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 no. Don't exist. Listen, Linus Sebastian, <laughs> you gotta calm your you gotta slow your roll there. Right. <laughs> There's you, you, very you, you clearly get, yeah. a GUI. It's using OpenGL, I, if I'm not mistaken. I, I wanna <laughs> go in I wanna go in and like read in the forums because I can imagine, you know, this is this is like, you know, it's hacker graphics. You you gotta you gotta make sacrifices, you know, because you're making a game here, right? You're not yeah, doing yeah, an exactly. actual chore. Mm -hmm. So same thing with like TV, you know, it's like, I'm going to use visual basic to track their IP, that joke. Uh, but 
you know, if your day in and day out is, you know, uh, like Windows desktop expert, you know, you're really good at clicking next buttons. Does this appeal more to you? Like, oh, I don't use a command line. I feel like I'm accomplishing something versus like we're looking at it of like, that's just how we do shit anyway. This is like, having to learn a new OS or some bullshit like that. This is what I imagine it, it, using it haiku is. It, it is. There, there's, <laughs> there's definitely like, and again, that, that tab completion is it's fucking saving grace. My God. <laughs> yes. My God. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> it's like, you just tab. It's like, start typing tab, 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 tab. And Hey, I got through the tutorial. Oh, can I, I bring one more thing up few, before we about what, what, what's up? What's, what's your, up? your, uh, bash history sucks, Brad. <laughs> yes. Oh, <No. no. laughs> Oh man. Uh, so coming up next, we're going to clutch onto our mice for dear life because Yay. we don't want them to go. Oh baby. I, I swear. I'll never leave you again. Mm-hmm. Well, we're doing some. We are the record. We are the feedback. We are the hate mail. Well, we're technically in the hate mail segment. What so the fuck, man? You, you, you no, no, the, we, we are underneath the hate mail segment. You, you like the, we, we discussed that. It's you like had a the seats table. of a George <laughs> Michael song going on there, man. Come on. Fuck. <laughs> we are the world. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, yes. I thought that's where you were going. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yes, that, that, that was very much what I was going for. The um, Yes, it's the hate mail. We, this is the bit where uh, chances are we've given you plenty of fodder uh, for you to pick at the nits as they were. So if you go to LinuxGameCast.com, there's a little contact form you can fill out. Just make sure to read the caveats at the top. Those are kind of important. Uh, and Emptor. pick LGCW as the show to send the hate mail to. Uh, otherwise, we may be misinclined to ignore it altogether. Or if you're a Patreon, you can leave us a comment on Patreon. Comments on YouTube sometimes work, sometimes don't. That that that's that that's a gamble you got to take. <laughs> Patreon comments, though, that's a great way to fast track. Yes, the, the, them's the big ones. <laughs> I, I, I'm and, distracted. Uh, I, I'm in Google Images right now. So. Oh no! What what, what 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 kind of fresh hell are you coming to subject to us now? <laughs> Things. Shut up. All right. We, we, do, we, do, we, we got to talk about Benjamin two, two M's. He's German. <laughs> Oh yes, fuck uh, Benjamin Jamin things. Benjamin, right. <laughs> uh, Benjamin man. Uh, where are the there? There it is. OBS companion. So this came in from. I made a little video. If you're wondering, like, hey, I use OBS. We play the games and we like switching things and all that fun stuff with the stream deck, the other deck in my life. Uh, well, I'm the gonna third have, deck in your life. No, I'm That's only going to have the. I'm, I'm still going to be a Una deck, man. Because I. I'm, what? A, what? A, what about my deck, man? <laughs> what about my deck? <laughs> Listen, man, get off my deck. Uh, okay. Never. <laughs> OBS Companion, which is Bit Focus Companion, back, is a software application that you can run locally on the machine it's connected to, and it connects to OBS over OBS WebSockets. But you can run it on a remote machine. In my case, uh, Raspberry Pi Four. And it allows you a lot more functionality and control over just like OBS. You can set up hundreds upon hundreds of different applications and run them individually. In fact, you can set up the Stream Deck to control 20 different OBS instances if you want. And Benjamin writes in, I watched this a couple of times, but just to make sure I understand. You're running OBS in the OBS WebSockets program on a different computer and only using the Raspi companion. Now, I bring this up because I don't understand. Maybe I'm not feeling where he's coming from this, because I think there's two ways to take this, because my initial take is the joke I constantly make. So what do you do with a Raspberry Pi 4 8 game? <laughs> I run a stream deck on it. <laughs> <laughs> or do you think this is a legitimate question? Like, So you just run the software on the raspberry pi and it can i control. think that that is the question yeah. here yeah he's asking are you running the obs websocket server and obs on the same machine and the raspberry pi is only the client for displaying the stuff on the stream deck well the raspberry pi is the server okay that's the websocket server is running on the raspberry pi the websocket runs on obs Oh, 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 okay. Okay. So right. here, here, let, 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 let me, let me, let me take a crack at this fucking hell. Um, okay. So, okay. So you, you have, you have computer a, that's going to be running OBS. That's the thing you want to be controlled by the stream deck that is running web sockets that is receiving HTTP traffic from a thing to control the scene, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the thing, so you're, you're, you're going to have um, a Raspberry Pi with some sort of like touchscreen on it that you lay out with that other software, which will send the no. request. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. The uh, Raspberry Pi is completely I, headless. The Raspberry what, Pi what? is just the server for the OBS companion. <laughs> Right. The, the, the BitFocus Companion is multiple things, including Nginx, or Nginx, as we like to call them in these parts. And then it runs the You're welcome. Companion <laughs> software stack on top of it. And yeah, it does communicate over uh, HTTP, whatever, with WebSockets. But I mean, it's its own portable thing. Now, it doesn't even have to be wired. One thing I'm playing around with doing is setting up a OBS BitFocus Companion instance on a Pi Zero W so I could have a wireless stream deck and it's just going to communicate. But here's the thing. I mean, that same stack. So, so, so does, does the, the stream deck communicates with the raspberry Pi, which then sends the request to OBS. Is that is correct? The, you, you, the, the, oh, the stream deck has no smarts whatsoever. It's just a block of lights with a USB cord on it. Right. And so you plug that into the, the raspberry, raspberry Pi. Pi. Right. And that, Over TCP that allows IP, you to, you can control the remote OBS and stuff. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. Okay. And, and you use the, you use the software running on the Pi to set up the buttons and have them have like meaning. Correct. Yeah. And that's one okay. way of doing it. Another way of doing it, if you don't want to set up with a Pi, but you just want to take advantage of BitFocus Companion, you just do a local host configuration of BitFocus Companion on the same machine that you're running OBS with. And then you just connect to it via the browser and there's like an interface there or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got a nice little GUI and you select what applications, you know, like if you want to. Yeah. And, and that you could theoretically display also on a, like a Raspberry Pi. Well, I mean, yeah, you could plug a monitor in a Raspberry Pi. Nobody's going to stop you. Yeah. Right. Hopefully. You need- okay. So to sum it up, Ben Jamin, the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> The answer to correct. that specific question is yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> See, I'm going to write that back. And he's not going to know like all this. He's like, oh, you're happy to dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- you are correct. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is exactly as you described. That is, that, yes. that is the answer to your question. Ah, <laughs> uh, we finished something, lads. <laughs> we did. Uh, this, oh, is, yes. this is from our theorem. <laughs> uh, and he, and he's, he's asking for uh, what's next. Seven years of blood, sweat, swears, and cheese. <laughs> So much cheese. Time to hunt for more puzzle games to torture you with, colon P. I think the, the next one we said is going to be uh, Dark Alliance. Oh, fuck. Yes, up. it is. The yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. three of us is the single entity and we can bring a friend. Oh, boy. Yes. Because there's four. four. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are we angry at this week? Hey, what you doing? Uh, <laughs> Dark Alliance is interesting because I think it'll make uh, interesting content mm-hmm. simply because I really, I don't, I don't have any like residual hatred for D and D or anything like that. It's just not my gem never has been, but this is it's, dumbed down. It's enough. not very good from what I understand. It's just not very good. Oh, right. But this <laughs> is the close, janky. closest you're going to get me to playing fucking D and D with you fuckers. Yeah, sure. Why not? Fair. <laughs> yep. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, shit, man. It's easier to play D&D with people who actually want to play D&D, so I'm not going to force you. I'm going to strap you to a chair and, like, force your hand to roll a 20-sided die. It wouldn't be enforcing me one way or the other. I just thought to make an interesting content because of the dynamics and trying to understand something I'm unfamiliar with only and present that to people so they'd find some enjoyment from it. But the way you said it's better. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, no, I want, I want, I want a very to good way to do that. But, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could uh, because yes, on the face of it, it is D and D lore. It's a fuck around, beat up D&D. video game. You fucking oh, it's, it's, nerds! It's a God damn! It, like they they, they had a D and D game called Shadows Over Mistara, and that was just like a brawler. That was fucking Golden Axe, and that was a great game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, you can. I mean, if it works D&D. for fucking and Raymond Stone, yeah. also a very good. What game. What about like Never Winter Nights? That's just a fuck around, beat shit up game. It's like, yeah, it's D and D. Yeah. Yeah, you do Except you do fuck around have and you do beat shit up. <laughs> Oh yes, yeah, so it counts some numbers and shit on the right side when you're smashing into. Yeah, shit. no, but, yeah. but like let, let, mm-hmm. let's be real. Any any D and D adventure is fuck around and beat shit up. That's yeah. <laughs> I, I I have a stack of books that can be reduced to fuck around. And I don't shit know. Up. I mean, let's be real. Here I am, simple. That's me, quite and I'm reductive like, of you, Jordan. I, I, it's incredibly reductive. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying you can, you can do it. See, this is the type of D and D gatekeeping people like me have to deal with. So 
<laughs> well, we bring like, hey, can we possibly try this little D&D thing? I think I could probably get my mind around. He's like, this is your fucking D&D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 you need to read a I, book. I mean, you, 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 you can put those words books. in my mouth all you want. That's all, exactly all what want. I'm doing because they came out of your mouth <laughs> less than two minutes ago. <laughs> I mean, you don't pay attention to the actual words, but you know, <laughs> which is why you wouldn't be good at D&D. So, you know, here, here we are. That's why we got to play uh, Dark Alliance. on top of everything else. Yeah. <laughs> this is Linux Gamecast. When, when are we warm and fuzzy? I'm trying We're here to, to leverage listen. accusations at each other if no one else. I'm yeah. going to do my best to play some D&D <laughs> with these kids, despite their best efforts, because I think it'll be fun. Well, well, play, play some Dark Alliance. We'll see how that goes. Which is D&D in its purest sure. form. Absolutely. Yes. It is. Uh-huh. I mean, listen, man. The sure. Cre- no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, 100%. The creator of D&D, Ari Salvatore. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 Bobby S. Yeah. The drizzle meister himself. That's what the, that's what DM stands for. Drizzle meister. It is. That's what it, it, you are. The drizzle meister. I am such a drizzle meister. I, I drizzled right away. I'm drizzling right now. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Please go on. I'm enjoying it. I'm just saying you can look forward to hours of this exact same bullshit conversation <laughs> right, while yeah. we're trying to play a video game. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. See, that's the re- that's the good good content. This is this is this is what we're hoping for. Two games don't disappoint us. All right, beautiful people. That's gonna do us for tonight. Because on that drizzly bombshell, we need to bring up get out. Um yeah. Thanks for showing up, hanging out with us, doing that thing we do live, speaking of live. If you want to come hang out with us while we're doing it, man, 8.30 Eastern Time here on Twitch. Before that, for patrons, if you want to pop into our Discord audio channel, or if you're an executive producer, we got a video feed for you, too. After the fact, listen to it podcast format. We have a YouTube channel. Some people know where it's at. We're not going to tell you, man. It's secret. I don't know. You can probably just search for Linux Gamecast and it's going to no. show up. But uh, yeah, scream in my direction on the Twitters, just at Vin Stone. I'm there, just at Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com or anywhere else you might encounter your drizzly internet drizzleness. I'm Jordan Swung, the drizzliest meister. <laughs> uh, to hear vivid descriptions of weird stone sculptures of frogs you can follow me at burning fool on twitter or twitch.tv slash burning fool i don't know when jordan said stone i was imagining something else like a vivid description of a van stone but hey uh if you'd like to shout at me i'm at an accounted for on twitter that's an accounted f-o-u-r uh yeah it's um that's the best place to get in touch if for some reason you think that's a good idea. And I just want to take this Mark Shuttle, closing you moment, this closing moment to thank um, the wine company, Vinstone, for releasing that because now I'm not like taking over the, like you, you will search me, you just find alcohol now, baby. It's awesome. That, I mean, that tracks. No. Yeah. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> Roller Gator. <laughs> we need TNG. Reboot Man. that shit. <laughs> I, yeah, Mike, starring Michael Dorn as Roller Gator. I would uh, watch that. I'd watch the fuck out of that. Roller Gator, Gator yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you would watch the fuck out of that. Yeah. Quit, quit giving well, we the internet good advisors. ideas. Oh, Megas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and our Theron, our executive producers, Alias Barbara, I'm Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox, Doc, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, and Kohaku. And Little Nicky Fan, Shit, Darkwing, go Abstraction. Kick, but. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the sea monsters, what? Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuta, Justin, Frost, Clyde, Strider, with the Death Notes, Nova, Bass, oh, Bath, Bit, Bit, Bath, Bit, yes, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, System D, Craig, Renee. We got plenty of chairlings like North Ranger, Linux, Nero, Christopher C, Mr. Alert, Dirty Door Geek, Viscat, Nobin, Douglas, Martin, W, Stevie, Michael W, or and J, Dementor, Zeno, Daniel, Monica, Alex, Peter, Ducky, Eskilmo, and JPX, and Maxius. Find upstanding cannibals like Carl, Mike, Sorry, Arthurian, Basil. Lennox, Nuru, Aldeus, <laughs> Noctilus, ja- John, Eshep. That went for Johnny Depp in my head for some reason in Game of jo- jo- John Eshep. Yeah. I want to see that guy. John Eshep. Pirates of the <laughs> Hera. Yeah. Me and seeing. Hera and Phelan. There you go. Isn't that right, Mr. Clicky? That's right. 
<laughs> oh no, we're too business. It's too much business. <laughs> we need to business this bitch up. No! <laughs> Dying to fire everyone. We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>